Bitcoin's move to a new all-time high is not going to come easy. We are struggling at $30,000. However, the significant lows in the market continue to hold up. Our very key levels are still intact. So that keeps the macro view intact for BTC. Now in today's video, I wanna look at the data, the facts showing us critical levels that the stock markets need to reach. They have done every single time in history in order for the bull markets to continue. And it seems like things are not going to be different this time. The bull markets are still intact. We have covered this since the lows of 2022 in June, October, and the higher lows. Meanwhile, the majority of the market was telling you we had to have further collapses. And now it seems like these collapse calls are getting pushed out to the second half of 2023. And I wanna show you some of the data that suggests they will be wrong again. Remember, the majority of traders, investors, analysts, strategists, media, the majority of them, over 90% are typically wrong because that's how the markets work. There's only about 10% of people that make money in these markets, and I'm sure you've heard that before. So I'm hoping that I can put you into that 10% of traders and investors that make money in these markets by showing you the data that for whatever reason or another, most don't want to believe. This is the data, this is the facts that come through the market, not views of strategists or anything like that that continue to get it wrong time and time again. So with that in mind, you are on your home of macro cycle analysis. We study the past to forecast the future. I'm doing this for over 15 years through real estate, stocks, and now Bitcoin and crypto, the new asset class that has taken the world by storm. Anyway. Thanks very much for your support on the channel, hitting the like and subscribing to the channel. I did a call out in last, uh, the last video there, which got a ton of views. You guys smashed up that subscribe button. So hopefully you're getting a lot of value from the content. Links to the top of the video description just quickly, because this is the week that we release our free crypto and economic report. That's the link at the top of the video description. And the other link is for TIA Premium, our membership, which teaches you guys how to trade and invest full time. And just looking at some of the records now, some of the results from you guys trading has been absolutely crushing it. So this is from the weekend through to today, 100%, 50%, 400%, more percentage points here on your crypto trades, 120, 29, well done to all you guys that are crushing the markets. As you can see from the dates, that is from the weekend all the way through till the 16th, so 160%. All right, congratulations guys. Let's dive into the analysis today. Something that hasn't changed throughout the course of Bitcoin's history. Now, we currently sit at $30,000, the all-time high, $69,000. So we're a little way away from that all-time high. It's 69 down to our current price. We've still got about another 56, 57% to go to reach that new all-time high. Bitcoin, the stock markets, you name it, they've continued to climb since their lows of the third quarter or fourth quarter, I should say, of 2022. We're up a long, long way and the data suggests we're going to continue up even higher in 2023, despite what these Wall Street strategists continue to tell us. They are looking at the most bearish second half outlook on record. Remember, these records aren't too long. It's 24 years here. This is the most bearish they've been. But typically when this happens, you start to see even higher prices. So it's almost the polar opposites. We've had a very bearish year in 2022, and now the market has springboard, springboarded from that point, and we're getting close to new all-time highs, within 6% on those stock markets. And typically in history, like I pointed out in those previous videos, there is no time in history that stock markets have been within 6% of their all-time highs after a 10-month bear market, after hitting new fresh highs of over 400 days, do they then fall to new lows? So I'm not saying it's impossible, but the data shows that in most cases, some of these records have never been broken. You've never seen lower prices after this. So it's absolutely weird and strange why strategists still think this. And I try to figure out why they would still say that there is more downside to come. Now, I don't think, I'm not sure exactly what they do on their day to day, but they do make a lot of money. You've got average incomes here of uh, uh, brokers, 150 grand. If you're one out of four of them, so the best, you're making a quarter million a year. The top earners are earning 400. So it's an easy 
12, 20, $30,000 in your bank account. And if you're in the bottom, you're still pocketing five to $6,000 a month in your bank account to be wrong on the markets every single freaking year. Now for analysts, again, same sort of thing, 88 grand, you can go down this, the highest paying jobs, etc. They're all high paying jobs. I don't think anyone is going to dispute that. 100, 200 grand. The problem I think is that they just need to keep coming up with ridiculous calls or whatever they need to show in order to please the managers, in order to please their investors. And typically, most want to hear the same thing over and over again. So that if, the, if everyone is talking about the market going down, there's a recession, they just want to keep hearing the same thing. Because if you tell someone something different, they're not going to believe you because everyone else is saying the same thing. And remember, humans are herd creatures. They like to hear the same thing and they feel comfort, comfort in hearing the same thing. So that's one idea. I'd love to hear from you if you've got a different thought. I think it's a pretty cushy job to be making this sort of money. And most people, we know from the stats, the data, that most of them are wrong time and time again. So you're pocketing your easy income. Just put out the strategies, the anal uh, analytics that you need to show in order to keep your job. Because at the end of the day, it doesn't matter whether you're making money or losing money because the majority of people continue to lose money. Okay, so that aside, I'm trying to figure out why they keep getting it wrong. That's just one other thought. Now, what is this data I hear you speak of, the old data? Well, this year, 2023, is on record as being the 12th best year in 95 years, mind you, in 95 years to have the first 134 trading days. Why have they picked 134? Well, the trading year is made up of typically about 255 trading days. So we're just past that sort of halfway point for the trading days that is. So uh, price return to the first 134 trading days we're sitting at 17.8 from the beginning of the year. The 12th best in history. Within history, there have been no losses in that year when the first half or the first 134 trading days have been positive. Now, the worst year was 1987, which was a very, very big collapse. You know, the Black Monday, the market collapsed about 50% over the weekend. But still, by the end of the calendar year, it was still a positive year. So barring that particular year, which was also end of a cycle, 1987, looking at the rest of these years, you can see that we had pretty decent average returns of roughly 25 to 30-ish percent. So we are still down at 17.8%. So if this is to occur and we're to reach somewhere around 25 to 30%, it's about another 10% away from where we currently are. Now we've got the chart of the S&P 500 and what I've done is overlay the areas of the Bitcoin cycle. So each of these rectangles shows a Bitcoin bull market. The bull market is recorded from a breakout into new all-time high price to the peak. Then you've got the Bitcoin bear market. So that top to the bottom, nice and clean. And then the accumulation period from the bottom to the breakout of the new all-time high. Now, of course, I don't consider a bull market only once the price breaks out to a new all-time high. The bull market is from the low to the high. But for the sake of the ex exercise here, looking at it in this way shows a pretty interesting picture that through each of these accumulation periods, periods which lasts about 700 days, you get a new all-time high or in the case of 2012, of course, remember Bitcoin was born out of the GFC. That was a collapse 2008, bottom in 2009. We had uh, the first Bitcoin being mined and sent and all that sort of stuff back in the early days. And then we had that accumulation. It still hit new fresh highs in 2012 as well. And so each of these accumulations, we've seen a new all-time high on the S&P in the first half of that Bitcoin accumulation stage. So these are the areas here, Bitcoin accumulation 2015-2016, Bitcoin accumulation 2019-2020, and now Bitcoin accumulation, the uh, tail end of 2022, but basically it looks like it's gonna be 2023 and 2024. And so in each of these cases, the halfway point, you've got a new S&P 500 all-time high. Does it have to happen? 
Of course not. You know, these are just random, could be random pieces of data. However, I'm just presenting you with what has happened in the past on the S&P and then showing you the data that suggests the S&P is going to hit a new all-time high this year as well, along with the dozens and dozens of videos on the channel that have shown from those lows that the market would go up in the second half of 2022 and 2023. And it's suggesting that we've got even higher to go, even though these strategists, analysts, professional traders, professional investors, media, crypto, financial media, whatever media you want to call it, are suggesting the second half now of the of uh, 2023 is going to be a bearish year for the S&P. I'm just presenting you with the data day by day, a new piece that you can add to your arsenal to show that these markets are in fact more bullish than most are making out. And the proof is in the pudding. This market has been up since the October low of 2022. We've now hit a new fresh high again this year. <laughs> Monday, the 17th of July, a new fresh high, the S&P nearly 30% up from that low. Now, like I said in the beginning of the video, almost everything is showing that there it's, it's nearly impossible for these markets to drop to new fresh lows. And I say nearly impossible because I don't control the markets and essentially they can do whatever they want. But this, the data and the technical analysis is showing that these markets do want to head higher over the course of 2023. And of course, remember, this is the third year of the presidential cycle, which I've also covered on the channel way back in late 2022 and early 2023, which also shows that the third year in the presidential cycle is another bullish year as well. Now, I wanted to leave something with you that shows that 2024, 2025, might not be as easy as 2023 has been. The gains have been very easy when you look back on it. But during this year, remember, it was very hard to think that we could see these sorts of gains in 2023. We talked about it, like I said, many times on the channel for the reasons why, but analysts are saying, no, 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 it's not the case. Now, I'm gonna go back to 2020, uh, 2003, 2004, 2005. And you might, I'm gonna relate this all back to Bitcoin as well, like the, the difficulties here. But in 2003, it was the easiest year to make money. Have a look at the cycle analysis here. This period is all of 2003. It was the cleanest year up, but it would have been much more difficult psychologically, fundamentally, to be investing at these lows. Remember, it's coming off the back of two, two and a half years of downtrend bearishness. The worst the world's ever seen. The 9-11 attacks on the back of a dot-com bust, on the back of everything else that happened that year interest rates rising, all that sort of stuff. But the gains look the easiest there. 2004, much more difficult because all of the gains have been had in 2003. 2005, still a positive year, but way more difficult. It's just bugger all gains for those two years. Then you get towards the end of the cycle, 2006, 2007. 2006 is a little easier. 2007, it's a tough year again because the masses are there. Now the masses get on board because they've seen what has already happened. And the masses act late. They always act late. They start to come in in 2004 because they feel safe because all their favorite pro analysts and traders are telling them it's safe time. They get destroyed. So they say, screw it, I'm staying out. It starts to creep up again. All right, they start to get back in. They get wiped out. But sometimes they make a little bit of money towards the end before it all comes crashing down. Now I'm suggesting that that is possible to happen again in 2024 maybe 2025. I'm not saying they'll be down years. I'm saying they're going to be much more rough years to be making money from because the good times, we're basically on those now. And maybe we still have another few more months to go of good times for this market. And then it gets tough because everyone's seen it already. They're like, oh, look, everything's sweet. We're hitting new all-time highs, like I suggested, potentially in 2023. And then they go, yep, it's time. 2024, maybe we lack. Let's wait and see. But it's happened before in the past after some of those great gains because everyone said not to get in the market. Look at 2009, 2010 and 11, difficult times, right? So that's always the case after a significant bear market. The bounce back's easy, but mentally and for the majority of people, they just can't stomach getting in the market after a big collapse. And then those next couple of years are pretty friggin' difficult. So with that in mind, each year since... Uh, Bitcoin has been created. So 2009, we've seen a new fresh high in the stock market. Now, once it broke 
the all time high as well in uh, 2013, the stock market has put in a new all time high every single year. It's not going to be like that forever, but we've seen a new all time high 2013, 2014, 2015, 2016, new all time highs 2017, 2018, 2019, even in the pandemic, prior to the pandemic, new all time high, after the pandemic, new all time high. 2021, just briefly in 2022. And potentially, we will see a new all time high in 2023. So let's keep that in mind as well as we move forward into the second half of 2023. Strategists typically always wrong, the media, crypto, financial, pro traders, investors, whatever you want to call themselves, typically always wrong. They miss the boat. And then they say when everyone else is comfortable getting into the markets, these are the most difficult times. That's when they say, yep, now's the time because they've already seen the market go up significantly, pretty much like what has just happened over the last six to 10 months in on the stock markets. Each of these times for the S&P, the second half of that accumulation has also hit a new fresh high. You can see it back in 2020, 2016, 2012. So potentially we hit a new all time high, it pauses, maybe we hit another fresh high for that 2024 as well. And that would basically sit us somewhere out towards the end of the fourth phase here. So we've got the three year bull market broken down into six month periods. As I've talked about before on the channel, the second and the third is what we currently sit in. These are typically some of the most difficult times for Bitcoin, but we've seen it's a pretty clear move for the S&P during these stages as well. But for Bitcoin, once we get to that fourth stage, it typically tests the old all time high again. And so that happens at the end of the fourth stage, leading into that fifth stage. How far away is that? Well, it looks like somewhere around the second half of 2024. As I've said before, for the S&P in the second half of these accumulation stages for the S&P, so this whole BTC area, it typically hits a new all time high again. We saw that 2016, or in this case, a new fresh high for 2012, so early in the cycles, uh, 2020. So maybe again, we go through one all time high, we screw around for the first half of 2024, while everyone else is trying to position themselves again, and then we go for that 20, late 2024. Remember, these are a long way out. The macro picture looks like we are in macro bull markets heading up. How it happens in between, anyone's guess, like we've seen multiple times, the main point here is that the S&P typically will hit a new all time high, then recover, correct, hit a new all time high, Bitcoin's at that stage where it's ready to test the new all time high. That's what I want to share with you guys today. Yes, it was a long video. Thanks again, like and subscribe. I'm here almost every single day besides if I take a little bit of a break. So sorry to the comment that said I was quiet for two days. Sorry, I was um, surfing. I'm on holidays here in Bali. Okay, chill out. We'll be back at a new video. Thanks again. Like and subscribe. You know the deal. Links at the top of the video description. It's your home of macrocycle analysis. I'll see you back in the next one. Till then, peace out.